everybody, this is John, Elite Gamers United. I'm going to start tonight's video out with a shout to my buddy Carl, what's going on, and to my man Tommy over at uh, my job, what's going on Tommy. Tonight, uh, it's the third night of Halloween, I'm going to do one of my favorite Dreamcast games, you probably saw me holding the case up, and that is Zombie Revenge. Right? Zombie Revenge was a 3D beat em up by Sega, published by Sega and developed by Sega, in the vein of, well, it was a side uh, spin off series. Uh, ah, it was a spin off to the House of the Dead series. It was originally called Blood Bullet, a House of the Dead side story. Game released in the arcades in 99, 98, and on the Dreamcast in early 2000. This game is and I'm going to tell you why, is one of my personal favorite beat-em-ups of all time. This game on the Dreamcast had so many awesome things going for it. Let's start with the modes. You had an original mode that was created specifically for the Dreamcast. You had the arcade mode, which was the same setup, same level layout as the arcade. You had a mini-game. You had a couple mini-games, including um, a fishing game, a zombie fishing game, I think there was a little raise, a mini little zombie. Uh, it was all for, uh, for the VMU, the little memory unit that plugged into the Dreamcast controller. And it was very cool. That VMU provided just as many hours of fun as the Dreamcast itself. Call me crazy. You know, raising chow babies, that was great. But um, I want what I want to talk about with this game first, I want to go to the visuals. It, had, it ran on the Naomi board, which if you know anything about, was a very capable 3D... Um, was a 3D architect, uh, architecture board uh, used in many Sega arcade games. It Most of those games ran at a blazing 60 frames a second. They had high quality textures and details. And there's nothing short of that here on the Dreamcast. You can see, you know, I mean, there are, there's a blurry texture here or there. The character models are well animated. The graphics are very, very good. The gameplay runs at 60 frames a second with... I don't think any slowdown whatsoever on the Dreamcast. Not that I remember, and I just played two and a half hours of it just to refresh my memory. But uh, this, let me just uh, recap the story. Uh, this mysteri mysterious man called Zed, who basically hates humanity for reasons I'm not going to spoil. You got to play the game. Um, unleashes a virus on the world. On the world, which well, on the city, I should say, and it just starts turning people into zombies. Three of the uh, AMS agents, Stick Brightling, Linda Rota, and Busujima, are sent to you know, destroy the zombies and find out who this mystery man is and stop him. The game uses um, <clears throat> it uses some tracks from the House of the Dead franchise. It has very uh, you know the voice acting is typical House of the Dead fare. It's one of those so bad it's good, and you gotta enjoy that, you know. The, the, the cheesy B-movie camp, it, it never gets old. It does not get old. I mean, perfect, flawless voice acting is incredible, you know. But there's something about the cheese that just belongs in certain types of games. And this is the type of game that has that cheese and will leave it where it is. The, the soundtrack, uh, there are a couple tracks pulled from the House of the Dead, specifically in the final battle, if I can recall. Uh, the Curian Mansion theme. And uh, one or two others that are in there. Otherwise, you know, standard fare. You know, uh, synthetic synth riffs, guitars, etc., etc. Nothing crazy. Nothing you're going to be humming on your way to work or on your way to school or on your way to the bar or wherever you go. Nothing like that. The gameplay, the controls are very responsive, very easy to work. You punch, attack, block, grab, and shoot your gun and pick up items. There's tons of different guns and items to pick up. There's side items that you pick up to feed your baby zombie on your VMU. There's, there's guns, there's health items, there's uh, melee objects, there's other guns. Um, in terms of the guns, every each of the three main characters has their own style of a pistol. Uh, my favorite character, Busujima, who's like a ninja type cop, but he's a badass. He uses uh, what looks like a 9mm with an extended barrel or a compensator on it. Not a silencer, but a compensator. And it, it's they all do the same amount of damage. 
But it's it's the visual, the, the fact that they went to the extreme to give each character their own type of gun, their personal preferred sidearm, just adds a lot more to the to the depth of the, of the game itself. And I think that's pretty cool. I really do. The game has a boss run mode. It has a time trial mode. It's got the arcade. It's got normal mode. It's got VMU mini games. The replay value is astronomical here. You can definitely spend a good five hours and not do the same thing twice. There's multiple branching paths. There's secret areas. There's secret weapons. There's there's a whole bunch of unlockables. It's it's you know what. A lot of beat 'em up games nowadays, the few that there are, don't go to those lengths to give replayability. They think throwing a shitload of enemies at you at once and having you overcome, you know, some undefying odds counts and makes you want to replay it. No. No. I want to find hidden areas. The Something towards the end of the game, I'm not going to, I don't want to spoil anything, is defined by a choice you make in the beginning on a computer screen within the game. I'm not going to say more than that. you got to play it for yourself. It is a very easy game to find. It is very cheap. It is not at all expensive. If anything, you'll spend between 10 to maybe, at the most, 20 bucks. It, it, was, it was a very wide... Everybody I knew that had a Dreamcast had this game. And you know what? If we could just go back to this formula for our beat-em-ups... The beat 'em ups would be incredible with all the new technology, but instead we need all we need the Dynasty Warriors crap. They're giving us God of War. Give us a good old fashioned beat 'em up. That's all we need. Zombies or no zombies, just give us a bunch of bunch of characters on screen and let us beat the shit out of them. Hit them with a garbage can. Hit them with a lead pipe. Shoot them to death. Light them on fire. Molotov cocktail. Gatling gun. Whatever you name it, let us do it. Now, I also want to mention this game I never once saw in the arcade. This was a very hard arcade game to find. And I went to a lot of arcades back when this game came out. You know, there were tons of them around. Never saw it once. Never saw it once, which is sad because this is a game I would love to play. In the arcades, it's just one of those you know, play with a friend standing up. It will be, it will be just to me. It will be a real cool experience. Um, I want to say back in the day, I'm just gonna put this down. I want to say this game. You know, if you read a lot of the reviews back in the day, it was all in the middle on the Dreamcast. It was very mixed, and I'll tell you why. At this time, the PlayStation Two was right around the corner. Everybody was doing anything they could to just crap on everything the Dreamcast put out. The real gamers that bought this game and that played the Dreamcast know the Dreamcast was where it was at, okay? Fantasy Star Online, I'm not going to say anymore, and Shenmue. That's going to be debatable, but Shenmue is one of my favorite series of all time. This game didn't get, didn't get its proper due, and I feel that the genre with the coming of the 3D uh, era, the genre, I think, started to get, became more of a joke and was really more laughed at and mocked. That's just how I feel. Because this game has so many things that games nowadays, a lot of them really lack. Like, open world games are one thing. And you know what? I think it's time we got all just come back down. You know? Let's go back to basics. Let's go back to basics. There's no reason why we can't. So, I'm going to end this with saying Zombie Revenge is an absolutely incredible beat-em-up on the Dreamcast. It remains a fun game to this day with you and a buddy. You can sit through it. You can probably get through the game in two hours. It does get very difficult. And on the harder difficulties, it's almost unfair. But you know what? Spend 10 20 bucks, Get a copy of this game. Sit down. Play it. It's a lot of fun. And I promise you, you will thank me for it. This is John, Elite Gamers United. You all have a wonderful night. And I'll see you tomorrow.